Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, Saudi Arabia, China, North Korea, and the US all have something in common. Can anyone venture off and guess or tell me what this is? No one? The nations I just listed are just a few of the 58 nations in the world that today in this day and age still practice capital punishment as a form of punishment. That's some company, what do you think? in the same group, never to be seen. Tonight, I'm here to tell you why we as a country, as a civilized society, we as the, as the citizens should move forward to abolish capital punishment as a form of punishment with their, within our judicial system. And there are several reasons as to why we should abolish this form of punishment, but tonight, we only have time to cover four. And those reasons being, one, that the death penalty, as we've come to know it here in the US, is unconstitutional. Two, being that it is not a deterrent, as some experts and some of you might think. Three is, it is a very expensive form of punishment, if not the most expensive form of punishment here in the US. And it is an unfair and unjust form of punishment within a legal system that tends to think of itself as the role model for other legal systems across the world. So first off, it is unconstitutional. The Eighth Amendment in our Bill of Rights uh, has a section that says no form of punishment should be considered or should be cruel and unusual punishment. Ladies and gentlemen, do any of you know who that is? Some of you, yeah, I see some head shakes. Uh, Joseph Wood, July of this year, July 2014, he was injected. He was set to die, convicted of murder, injected, and it took him two hours to die on the, on the table. Two hours. Does anyone venture off, care to argue that that's not cruel? That's not an unusual form to die. I'm going to cite another case in 1995. This case was a California case. Jones versus Chapel. Judge, Kurt, Judge Kearney said, and I quote, with complete uncertainty as to when or even whether it will come is a punishment no rational jury or legislative could ever impose. That's a federal judge striking down the death penalty, saying it's cruel and unusual. Should we not move forward with the ruling of a judge? This judge, uh, uh, this is from a reading from The Economist, by doing so struck down that uh, case and several other cases with death penalty in California. There's a lot of talk and a lot of experts Way the pros and cons say it's a deterrent. And sure, in, in, if you think about the process itself, if you're stealing from a store and a police officer goes and puts a bullet in your head, the person right behind him who's stealing a TV will drop the TV immediately. Yeah, that works. But our system's not meant to work that way. Our system has a due process. And it doesn't work. The reason why the death penalty doesn't work is because it takes too long. It's ineffective because the cases are dragged out to ensure that everybody gets a fair say, that we go in debt to the cases. So let's have a look at uh, one of these surveys. And these graphs that you're seeing are from Amnesty International, Death Penalty Information Center.org, and uh, from American Civil Liberty Union. That is a survey conducted of uh, police chiefs across the nation, and they were asked, what do you think could help in reducing violent crimes? Number one, reducing drug abuse, okay? The last one, less than 2% to expand the death penalty. Police chiefs, these are people out there that get to see day-to-day -day crime, that get to see how the court system works, they're saying the death penalty works. These graphs speak for themselves. I'll give you a second to have a look at them. A 
another one, and this is one of my favorites, I'm talking about the death penalty. This is, you can find it several places. Amnesty is one of them, Amnesty International. The red line is states that have the death penalty, and that's their murder rate. It's much higher in states here in America that don't have the death penalty. And you can just follow the trend. You can see several years. That's just a survey conducted by another one of these uh, sources. So, in actuality, it's definitely not a deterrent. People don't think of it is, but yet we still practice it. My third point is, it's, it's expensive, extremely expensive. The cases drag for years. They tie up our judicial systems. So, your tax dollars can be used for something else. Dab, healthcare, education, infrastructure. The Dallas Morning News said that in Texas, the average death case is $2.3 million, uses $2.3 million. That is three times the cost of imprisoning that person, that convict, in jail, maximum security, for 40 years. Another article that I read, um, this one is from the Palm Beach Post, Florida. Florida, in 2000, spent over 51 million years, uh, 51 million dollars a year above what it would take to imprison every murderer in that state for the rest of their life. And that's just what the 51 million is stating, so it would bring out the case to about 24. And the last, it is unjust, it's a blemish in our system, since 1973, over 140 people have been released in the 21, 26 states that practice the death penalty. So essentially, if we are playing God with the lives of people, shouldn't we be perfect? Shouldn't that number be zero? So the death penalty should abolish. And tonight, this speech, this presentation, wasn't for you to go out there and sign a petition. It wasn't for you to turn into legislatures and write bills to abolish it. It was a little bit to educate you in hopes that you may educate others and eventually this cruel and unusual form of punishment can be taken away from our society. What did you like about Omar's speech? Very well structured. Okay, well structured. I've got four points. One, two, three, four. There we got some good substructure. Okay, what else did you like? I liked when he said, like, when, if we're playing God, shouldn't we all be perfect? I thought that was really powerful because that's very true. Very true, particularly given the slide that he was showing at that yeah. time. All right, any quick suggestions for him? Be careful of your tone. It sounded like a little bit attacking, and it could have been more like it could have pro possibly helped him a little more to not like to make it more um, like yeah, it's going to be a little attacking because it is a persuasive paper um, speech, but it, it was just too much like you believe this, you believe that, which isn't necessarily true. Okay. So I mean, just that you the use of more the our language. yeah the yeah words, using more our language yeah okay all right. Okay, a couple things before we take a break. I was so eager to get your outlines to you last time that I forgot to put them in face in um, the grade book. So if you bring me your outlines, I'll record them right up here, right now, so that I'll get those. And then we'll take a break for about 10 minutes until about 25 of 8. And uh, then we'll go. We've got seven more to go. Thank <laughs> you. 
Is she, is she gonna... 